Well, good afternoon, Yellow Army, and welcome back to the latest question and answer session with the gaffer. Now, it wouldn't be much of a question and answer session if I didn't have the man himself here. So, uh, warm welcome to Gary Johnson. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. No problem, mate. Appreciate uh, the interest from our supporters. And you talk about the interest, Gary. We have had an absolutely phenomenal response to um, our latest uh, Q&A session with the gaffer. Um, so without further ado, uh, we should crack on. Uh, nothing is filtered in from these uh, interviews. It, uh, it's, uh, although I must say that I've only sent these across to the gaffer earlier on this morning. So uh, apologies if we're catching you on the hop a little bit, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to try and be as honest as I can. Um, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to, uh, to to be honest in the public domain when obviously this goes out to quite a few uh, social media type uh, outlets. So, uh, but anyway, I, I, I always try and be as honest as I can, and hopefully people will judge that by the by the end of the uh, the end of the session, which sounds like it could be some time. <laughs> Uh, we've got quite a few here, but um, we'll start off with Kieran. Now, Kieran's question was actually prior to last night's game, I should add. And he says here, with two draws, two losses and a win in the last five league matches, how do you intend on getting us back to our dominant winning ways so we can secure promotion? Yeah, it'd be nice. Um, we did have a, uh, all those words that he used. We, we did have that uh, earlier on and, and we are going through a, a little patch where We've, we've had to be quite vigilant um, because in that group of games, we played Notts County and we played Sutton, who were two of, you know, probably our main rivals, two of maybe three or four. So it was so important not to lose those games. Now, we did go out to try and win them, but in effect, it was a better result for us than for Sutton or Notts County because they didn't sort of get any nearer us. Um, we've had a couple of uh, poor results at, at home um, for reasons that, you know, we've already discuss <laughs> discussed on our website after uh, the game interview. But um, how we get it back is you keep going. Uh, you know, you keep working hard. And then we've got a group of lads that are as devastated as anyone else when A, they don't play well, or B, the team doesn't play well, or C, we don't get a result. I mean, we've got such a passionate group. Um, it's unbelievable. And, and you know that that group will always come back at some stage fighting and come back strong. Um, we hope sooner rather than later when we get our squad back together, with you know, all our injuries, etc., cetera, um, back competing for a place then we'll be even even more stronger. But we've got to keep believing. We've got to, we've got to stay lucky. I mean, you know, there was a few games where we, we scored at the end of a game. You know, our team's still done that, even with Wildstone yesterday. And if you look at Wildstone yesterday, you know, we, we were camped in their half in the second half and we've hit the post. We've missed some shooting opportunities. Their goalies made a... Uh, a couple of great saves. We thought we might have got a couple of penalties. So, you know, you've got to be lucky as well. Um, but you've got to keep believing. And I think at the moment, we're still in a position where we've got 44 points from uh, 22 games. So that gives us our two points a game at the moment. Um, and so, you know, we're in, we're, in a, we're in the best position at this moment in time. Now, the others have got games in hand. And some of them could, if they win their three, four, five games in hand, could just pick us by a point or so. But uh, it's not it's not easy to win four or five games in the in the, in the national league. So uh, we'll see how it all goes. But the sooner we get back to, uh, uh, as Kieran said, you know, our, our, our best, uh, then the better. But obviously, Kieran will know as well as all the supporters know. You can't be at your best every week. That's not the nature of the game because. Unfortunately, you've got an opposition that are trying to stop you. <laughs> and some of them do it better than others. Thank you very much for that question, Kieran. So stick with us, Yellow Army's very much the uh, message from the gaffer. Next yeah. up, we've got James, who's all the way up in Wigan. And he says, with Danny Wright being out for the foreseeable future, can we expect to see another no-nonsense experienced striker to join in the meantime, as we seem to be struggling with what we have up front at the moment? What do you think about that, gaffer? Well, yeah, it's a good question. Um, there's not a million you know, no-nonsense experienced strikers out there that you can go and get. You know, they don't just turn up on your doorstep, as it were. 
and we've had this discussion several times about where they live, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we thought we had that in in Danny Wright, <laughs> of course, like exactly what uh, James says. Um, we've got a younger version um, in Josh, and we think that he will get better. You know, he had a decent. He's had this. It's unfortunate that he got in, injured and had to come off at uh, Southport, but he got his goal. I thought he played well yesterday. He, he put in a lot of work um, and effort, and so you know, he's he certainly got the everything else by the experience. So hopefully he'll get better. But meanwhile, you're always looking for you know what James is is, is asking for, and if they're out there. We'll, we'll sort of know about it. Um, and then if he's available, then you know, more power to our elbow. But it's, a, it's not as easy as like you know, picking up a paper saying, well, he's good, let's get him in. Do you know what I mean? So, but uh, I understand the question and you know, we'll try very hard to keep improving our squad. Next up is Sam Drewith, who I think celebrated a birthday recently. So happy birthday to you, Sam. Uh, the team has been so exciting to watch this season. And it seems like there's a real togetherness that shows by the way the team are playing together. Sam says that have discussions started over contracts for next season? Does that depend on the league that they're playing in? And he also says, thanks for keeping us entertained and you can't wait for the promotion party. So uh, great stuff there for <laughs> Sam. But uh, well, are the contract uh, negotiations started yet or, 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 or does it very much depend on the division? We're well, in? well, it's... With contract negotiations over the years, I've always found you've got to be very clever in uh, the timing of it. Um, not normal, without the pandemic, so a normal season, you would probably start talking to players sometime towards the end of January. Because by that, at that point, you'll know what position you are in the league, how well you're doing, you've played more than three quarters of the game sometimes at, at, at that stage. And so you start making, you know, having discussions with ones that you want to keep or that you don't want to keep. Both of them give you a problem sometimes because if you want to keep someone and you offer him a contract, but he doesn't want to sign the contract because he wants to see if there's Man United out there for him, then that becomes a negative. Mm. If you've got somebody that you're not going to sign, give a contract to, then is he going to give you 100% for the rest of the season, knowing that if you get promoted, he's not going to be with you? Uh, some people can say, well, leave them ones till the end of the season. But then they will know that you've already offered four or five people a contract. Um, and, you know, as I say, if they turn it down, it makes it very difficult for the relationship. Um, so I've learned over the years that um, you have to just get the timing right. Sometimes uh, a lad will come to you and say, um, you know, Gaffer, I'd like to talk about the future. Um, if they're over 24, they generally leave it a little while longer because they become free agents. If they're under 24, then you know, they may come up or we may you know, talk to them sort of thing. But it's not quite the right time yet. Although we're top of the league and it's going well, we still play just short of, well, no, it's probably exactly half the games now. And I think we've got to play a few more to uh, make our assessment. So at the moment, I'm just keeping it calm, uh, keeping all the players interested, trying to get them all to believe that we've got every chance of getting into the Football League next season. Um, and I'd like to do it with all of you at the moment. Great. Well, uh, very interesting question. Very interesting good answer question. as well. Good, then. good question. Next up, we have Chris B. And he says, uh, along with a few others, I was surprised against Altrincham when there was no recognised front man. Now, was this because um, you reckoned that the strikers available were not going to contribute sufficiently against strong opposition? Or was it that needs must and the reinforced midfield was necessary for this match. And he says here that he's classing Connor as a midfielder rather than a striker. So another interesting one there from Chris. What do you, uh, what do you think about that one? Yeah, it's a good one because, you know, I knew the question would come up if we got beat in the game. <laughs> and we did get beat in the game. Um, in, in hindsight, it didn't work out for us because players didn't quite 
get their game going with that what we call false number nine that we tried because we we felt that the team that we put onto the pitch was our most experienced team and instead of having a striker and two wide men we 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 wanted Connor to be like the number nine stroke ten as they say false nine but getting our two wingers in Aaron the main and uh and Ben Whitfield further up the field and we would use them to slide them in because we felt we needed Connor in that position rather than up a striker up against their centre backs. Mm. Um, and again, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I have to make decisions before hindsight and everyone else can slaughter you when it when it doesn't come off. But over the season you'd hope that um, you get most decisions right either during a game or you know for the next game with tactics and everything. But on that day, Altrincham played a good game and our boys wasn't quite um, up for it on, on the day. We didn't quite play to the plan because you know, Altrincham did play well that day and, and they've since you know, done well against other teams and they're up there. So, um, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll keep making the decisions for the right reasons. Um, I think I changed it in that game as well anyway. I changed it around. I'm not frightened to change either a player coming off or a player coming on or changing our, our thoughts and our um, tactics for the following game. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it looked good on paper, um, but um, it didn't quite work out on the day because we lost the game. Funny enough, we started quite well in that game and it could have been so different. And uh, people would have said, what a genius the manager is for playing a false number nine. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're an idiot. When you get when you get it wrong, but uh, so apologies for that. But it was done for the right reason. Brilliant. Thank you again for being so Uh Next up is Mo Page. Now Mo's asking a question that many people ask, not just this season, but through the years, whenever you're uh, in cup competitions and league tournaments. Um, just wanted to ask if are you worried that the FA Trophy becomes a distraction from the league? Uh, we're not in great form at the moment, and the fans really only want one thing, which is promotion. Thanks for your question, Mo. What do you think? Good question again. Um, we must have the intelligent ones this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, of course, I can't put one of my teams into a game, whatever the competition, and say it doesn't matter if we lose this game. You know, we have to take each game as it comes, uh, the old saying, um, and, we've got to, and we've got to try and win it because you've got to have a winning mentality in your club. You can't pick and choose which ones you want to win and which ones you don't mind losing sort of thing. Yes, you can play a second team or something like that, but we haven't really got that capacity at the moment to have a, a second team. And then once you get into uh, the realms of the quarterfinals, as it were, then you're so close to a Wembley final, which I can tell you is a fantastic day, so long as you win. And so long as you get supporters there. So, you know, we've got to play each game like we want to win it and, and get the experience of a, of a, you know, a Wembley final and then win it. And if the supporters are back, what a great day that is, uh, you know, that, that situation with, uh, with uh, Yeovil. Uh, so what do you do? You know, yes, I think it can be a problem because of the amount of games that we've got to play. That's why it's been important that our... Um, COVID protocol has been so stringent so that we don't lose league games and then have to catch up on them later. And what we see at the moment is that um, we haven't had too many problems with game, games. Have, we haven't had to cancel any games. So we're on with Altrincham, I think, where we've played 22 games and some teams have played three, four, five games less. So that might give us a little bit of um, breathing space come to the latter stages of the season. However, the National League have still got to fit in games against us with these teams that have only played, you know, what well, have played a lot less games than us. Mm. So that might be a bit dodgy come the end of the season or come towards the end of the season. Because, for instance, we were, uh, for getting into the next round, we were due to play Dover in the league. So that gets cancelled because the FA Trophy takes precedent. Um, and then you've got to fill that in, fill that game in. Now, Dover 
are fully booked <laughs> right until I think it's mid-May. Mm. And the season's supposed to end on May the 29th. You know what I mean? So we have to see, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're quickly how we can get all those games in that we've that we've missed. Well, there's plenty of exciting games coming up, that's, that's for sure. And of course, this weekend we play Woking, only to return there in, uh, in two weeks' time in the FA Trophy. So interesting times indeed, Gaffer. Uh, yeah. Nigel Stimson is next. Uh, he says, whilst it's been great for both the team's performance and the club's reputation regarding helping develop youth players from higher league teams on loan, where do we stand with regard to developing our own youth players in particular, Olaf Kozella. Now, again, Nigel uh, sent this across before last night's match where Olaf actually came off the bench. Like many supporters, I've seen his clear potential from the few first-team opportunities he's been given. With the lower league suspended, though, how can his development progress? Well, it has to progress with us. Um, you know, unfortunately, he's had a, a bit of a tough time, Olaf, um, you know, which is a bit, not sort of personal as in his, his football side of things, but uh, other things is that to deal with and he's dealing with them very well and he's, he's growing up very quickly because of that. Um, and, and so he went to Dorchester to get some games. Unfortunately, then their games finished. Um, and it's, he's one of them lads, I, I've, I've said it a million times, while I'm here, Olaf will be here. All right, it's a confirmation for him and his and his family because I think that there is a player in there um, because he started so young with us. I think we give him his debut at sixteen, um, but then we moved up a level, and I'm not gonna. I've got to decide when I think is the right time and when he's ready um, to play him in the first team from a starting position. Now he's okay at the moment because we talk nearly every day about his game and what he needs to improve on. He, he hasn't quite had the upbringing that you would get, for instance, at an academy, um, you know, where they you know, train every day, they play games every day against, not every day, every week against you know, other top teams. So, it, you know, he's going to be slightly behind that side of it. And especially with the, you know, the, 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 the pandemic, side of things you know some people have had to self-isolate because they've been in contact with somebody um you know so they lose miss out on 10 days every now and again you know that's happened to sort of three or four of our boys um but Olaf is is one for the future for sure um but I'll, I'll, I'll only play him when he's ready and when I think he's ready um and that will be you know at that point when you'll get a <laughs> I've got a little bell there holding the uh, thing up. When you get that little ding, you go, aye, aye, he's ready. And that's, um, and he will be at some stage, but we just got to pick the right time. Pick the right time for the boy. Oh, great, very or encouraging news from the, Olaf. The man. Yeah, or the man as he is now. Yeah, very much. And then you heard it from the gaffer himself there. As long as he's at the club, Olaf will be there as well. So yeah. great news there. Oh, I'll tell him that every week. <laughs> We've got Dan and George Elliott from Cambridge who have joined forces to pose the next question. Um, how much have you and the players missed the Yellow Army on the road? Has that impacted on performances or times perhaps when games or the tempo has gone a little bit flat? So that's an interesting question there. I know you've missed the fans. Yeah, no, we, we miss them greatly. Don't we? I've said it a million times that we, uh, the, the, we, we're, we're in this game because of the fans. Um, and because, you know, we're in an entertainment, um, uh, you know, uh, an entertainment, whatever, what, what, am I, what word am I looking for? Don, I'm just industry. Industry, thank you. Just checking you're listening still. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, we're in the entertainment industry and we, and we need to entertain. And, it, and although you've got streaming, you're not entertaining a, like a live audience, if you like, that are in the stadium. And there's no doubt that throughout our promotion at the conference south. The supporters played a, a massive part. That you know, they weren't just the number twelve shirt. They was one to eleven and twelve. You know what I mean? They was they was that important because, judging by these questions and all, we got an intelligent football support for our club, and they know the game. And I and I and I, 
I genuinely believe that because they know when to get behind the lads. They know when to give them a little bit of stick if they need to um, and have a little moan up. But they do know how to get behind the lads. And there have been occasions where just me and Downsy screaming and shouting on the line um, has not been the force of five, six, seven, like sometimes we had, even if it was two or three thousand supporters in our stadium, will, you know, willing them on, if you like, because that positive support that we get at Playmore um, definitely earns us points, absolutely. And that's why we try and have like a little bit of an affinity with the camera, the one man and his yeah. camera, and we clap the, because we're trying to imagine the supporters that are out there willing us to win. Um, and obviously, if we win, you know, we I do me little, me little bit at the end, and uh, and and genuinely, you know, we're we're pleased that they they're there, but uh, they're obviously not at the stadium. So it, it's been a it's been a massive miss. However, we are still top of the league, and if the season stopped tomorrow, then uh, our points per game would still be ahead of everyone else. Okay, and it was uh, it was lovely over just before Christmas having the Yellow Army back for that uh, temporary period, and it's it's great that you're here today, Gaffer, able to uh, get involved with the Yellow Army uh, virtually, of course. Um, yeah. Next, we've got Tony McHale, who wants to talk about set pieces. Now, he says when he watches the Premier League, he sees some great imagination sometimes with set pieces, and he feels that for a long time now uh, we don't show enough imagination uh, or what, on what should be a scoring opportunity. He asked, do we keep statistics on how many goals are scored from set pieces and wonders how much time is spent during training on set pieces? So thanks for your question, Tony. Not an easy one to answer, but there you go, Gaffer. Well, it wasn't. That's why I asked for a little, a little bit of time, which it didn't give me much. But uh, to find out, you know, I, I, I don't know those stats, but we, I always get them sort of almost monthly if I ask for them. You know what I mean? Now, I, I agree with Tony that, you know, every, everybody wants to score more set plays. Generally, you're looking at, they say, by the end of the season, nearly every club, because some will score more than others, but every club will score around about 50% of their goals from set plays, which is why they are quite important. So I rang up our statistician, it was Louis Burton Shaw, who does a fantastic job for us. And I asked him, um, what are our ratio of set plays goals to our number of goals and unbelievably he was able to put his finger straight on it and I'll give you the, uh, exactly the, the facts in all competitions we've scored 56 goals and of those 56 goals now when they say about set plays they include penalties but I'm going to include the penalties but we've scored 14 from set plays and 5 penalties. Now that works out I think at about 40%. Mm -hmm. So we're just below that but if in the next game we score a couple from set plays and they also include um, what they class as the seconds from set plays. So for instance you let a wide free kick and a um, centre half will head it back across the goal and somebody who's in front, front of the goalie will touch it in. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. like a they call it a second from that or if somebody hits a shot and it hits the crossbar, it's the keeper on the back of the head and goes in, then that, you know, obviously that counts as well. So, um, so that's where we are now. What Tony did say at the start of his uh, question was he's been watching Premier League games. Now that's wonderful, <laughs> but obviously Premier League teams have got that, what your class is, you know, extra little bit of whether it be the quality, whether it be the desire, whether it'll be the execution. Now, you can have desire at our level and delivery, and we, we do have that, and execution, i.e. technique. But you'll find that there'll be more set play goals in the Premiership. It might even be a bigger percentage because of their, their quality. Now, you know, we've got some good strikers of the ball, and it, it goes in little bundles with us. Every now and again, we'll score, you know, three or four in three or four games, mm. uh, and then we'll have a little lull, lull in it. Um, but I'm pretty sure at the end of the season, come back Tony to us at the end of the season, and and I reckon we'd definitely be able to say, well, we're up with everybody else. 
which is around about 50% of the goals. Great. Well, some interesting statistics there. And uh, well done, Louis, on picking, putting that one out the uh, bag so quickly. <laughs> yeah. um, so Nick Payne, now I don't know if uh, any of the directors are a listening gaffer, but I'll, I'll read you his. He says, if you were offered a job with a club in a higher league and a nice pay rise, would you take this opportunity or stay with Torquay? So really putting you on the spot here, gaffer. <laughs> <laughs> well, has he been talking to my missus? <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I, I always get out of that one by saying that it's like a, that there's no decision to make until there's a decision to make. <laughs> um, and all I will say is that at any club I've been at, I always give 100% uh, of my time and energy to that club. And if I enjoy the club and I trust the club, um, you have no thoughts about moving on whatsoever, you know, especially when you get a little bit older sort of thing. But um, at this moment in time, I, I, I love the club. Um, I wouldn't want to let the boys down. I wouldn't let the supporters down. I don't want to let the direct, uh, directors down, um, supporters, players. You know, it's really important that um, they all know that you're totally committed. To this to the football club that you're at and that's this one at the moment so i'm enjoying it um so you know at, at this moment in time this is where where i am and this is where i'll be and of course gaffer when you first arrived at plane where you talked about it the project interested you that obviously we were at the time which seemed a long time ago now mid table and national league south but you said that you know the potential was to get a couple of promotions get back in the football league and actually if you fast forward you know a couple of years, years things are looking pretty good so we're still very much in the project it's going in the right direction isn't it absolutely and you can't do it on your own you know i've always said i've got a great staff with me that have got that passion that i've got for the football club um you know, downs has been a great inclusion to bring him in from cheltenham which was great because he knows my game and so on and so forth you know he's been a a terrific uh, employer of, of, of the club um, and that's what the players and supporters need to see that unity in, in, in the club is used quite a lot the word unity but there is and we all know the aim um, and everybody knows that everybody's trying to do their best for everybody else uh, and once you start getting that trust um, it can get you through some of the Bad, not bad times, but the, the less um, successful times mm -hmm. when that only lasts a little while before, you know, your gang, if you like, get it back because yeah. of their, you know, their trust in each other and uh, in the football club. And the next question is from somebody that's just given us their initials, FB. They said that the uh, COVID pandemic has impacted on a lot of people, particularly young people. The youth teams at Torquay have been left in limbo by the virus, and particularly the under-18s, some of whom were, of course, hoping to progress with the club. Have you got any uh, words of encouragement for those lads that have been impacted in that way? Yeah, well, I, I know, you know, Toddy's been trying to keep in touch with them and keep them interested. You know, he's our um, youth development man. Um, very, it's really difficult for the lads. It's the same as you know, going to school or whatever. You know, everything's stopped for them, hasn't it? It's come to a halt. Of course, the club has to do things in the correct way. A, it's illegal anyway to be training uh, mm. together. Um, you've got to keep everybody safe. A group of lads training together that, you know, if there is a problem, they could take home. So, you know, as we're in a lockdown, then, of course, that makes it very, very difficult. The, the, the advice I can give those lads is to say that um, probably the best thing is, is to work. You can't, you can work physically because you can still run around. But the mental side of it, they might want to, you know, get, maybe get on the computers or if it's not on computers, then get on the telly. But look at the top players in, in your position and learn the game mentally at this moment in time. You know, just watch the, the great players that you, you see on Sky. You know, they've all got 15 minutes of footage and things like that. Yeah. Write it down. Write down your aims and ambitions and where you want to be and, and what you've got to do to get there. Um, from a club point of view, then, of course, 
we understand that these some of these lads, I think, as uh, the, the question from FB, did you say it was? Yeah. Um, you know, the question that, that came to us was, some of these lads, are, it could be a parent, actually, of one of the boys, you know, a little bit worried about it. But when we all get back together, um, and we know the players anyway, you know, we've seen them before the pandemic began, um, we're going to be bringing them in. They're going to be training with us quite often. And we're going to give every single one of them the opportunity to show themselves again coming out of the pandemic. So they've just got to be ready for that. So there's a you know a little clue for them to that when you know when they all come back in, um, we will give them every opportunity to show themselves and to see whether they're good enough to be taken on, as I say, post pandemic, because um, they might have been good pre pandemic, but they might not have done anything between, you know, on their own, uh, even mentally or physically. So uh, post-pandemic, they've got to show us that uh, they've got what it takes. Some sort of great words of advice there. And of course, the number of them figured uh, heavily and showed up well in the uh, pre-season campaign. Um, Simon's next. Hi, Simon. Uh, the National League South Championship season DVD gave us an insight into the team's life on the road. But he asked, what's it like in the current uh, COVID-19 dominated season? It must be so difficult finding hotels where most are closed, sharing rooms, traveling on a coach. It must be a bit of a nightmare for whoever has to make the arrangements and it must be extra difficult for both the management and players. It must be, well, it, it is unique, Gaffer, isn't it? How are you all getting through it? Well, it's absolutely, and it's all new. You, you need someone that we've got at our club, as we all know, a COVID officer that knows what it's all about and understands it and is very vigilant and thank God, you know, he has been because we've had certain situations where it could have been a much bigger problem had we not been uh, looking after our protocols. Um, so we have a, we, we've got a company and it's a company that I've dealt with at all my clubs and I, you know, I passed the information on to Torquay when, when, when I came in. And it's a company that, that gets hotels for the top clubs i.e the premiership uh, and top championship clubs so this company has a group of hotels that they trust um every time during the pandemic that we've gone to a hotel there's only been us there and obviously all the protocols that go with that the one-way systems in there the mask and the food is all packaged it, it's it's a, a, a it's a massive um bit of work that these hotels have to do when when we we go there now i'm pretty sure that we probably say it quietly probably play a bit less than man united would at the same hotel <laughs> so uh so we're very lucky to um to have this uh this company and uh on on our side and, and they make sure that we're in the the right hotels um because they're hotels that they use and you know, our boys are very good in these hotels and we, we do keep to the protocol 100%. Uh, so that's the hotels. And what was, was there any, um, what else was there on there? Oh, the coach. Um, the coaches, I used to take nearly the full squad to games before the pandemic, but obviously you can't now because of the social distancing and there's certain seats you can sit on and there's certain seats on the coach that you can't sit on. Um, and even our driver is the best driver in the world, Jack, um, who's our coach driver. He's had to take uh, tests, as we all have, um, before we travel. So, you know, it's, we know the driver's safe. We know we're all safe. Um, and then, but we still keep social distance on the bus as much as we can because I take less numbers now away with us. Very well, there's a, a lot involved there. Darren, thanks for giving us that insight too. What's going on? A good question there, again from Simon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. Steve Harris is, is next, Gaffer, and he says, um, at present, there's a number of your former players currently managing in the Football League. Now, of course, we've got Lee at Sunderland, also Nathan Jones at Luton, and Grant McCann at Hull. And he asks, could you see any of your present personnel that are at Playmore at the moment following in their footsteps and becoming managers in the future? <laughs> wow. Well, right. Um, well, the one that springs to mind, uh, that would probably spring to most players' minds that are at the club, is Asa, Asa Hall. Um, I think he's totally 
I think he's got the total belief in in our game because obviously he saw it at Cheltenham as well. Um, I think he probably will be building up a, um, a knowledge of what sort of game he might uh, want to play. And I bet it's very similar to what we're doing. Um, and, he, and he's, you know, we, we, we sort of almost treat him like a, a third coach, if you like, at, at, at the club. And, you know, we confide in him and he confides in us. He's our club captain, so he'll talk to the players if he needs to, come back to us if there's any problems, and then we he'll go back to the player, you know, all that sort of thing. So um, he's he's probably the one that if I had to put a bet on it, he, he would uh, you know, become a decent manager in time. Not yet, because he's still a decent player. Um, he might have to lose the ponytail if he wants to be a manager. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. There's a few managers now that are a little bit different to my old school style, I suppose. But... Um, no, he's, I think he, he would have it all there when he's ready. Yeah, I've certainly had the uh, players mention him a few times when the question's been asked to them. So uh, no great surprise there that you've also mentioned, Asa. Uh, we've got Martin Walters now, who's a former amateur footballer. Who's, he sent quite a long email, uh, raised various different points about goal celebrations. Now, he initially said that it might be a bit too long to put in a Q&A session, but he's raised some interesting points. So I just thought I'd run this past you, Gaffer. Uh, he says here, uh, why do players insist on racing into the corner of the pitch to celebrate uh, with a goal? Sometimes it's all 11 that are involved uh, and they join in a group cuddling session, jumping each over each other yeah. and then spending several minutes limply slapping hands before drifting back to the centre circle. Now, in his opinion, he says he feels this looks false. And the way that Billy Waters celebrated his equaliser at Wheelstone, against Wheelstone yesterday was full of intent and determination, surely fits in more with the talky way than group hugs. So what's your opinion on that one? Well, we haven't really got a talky way of group hugs. <laughs> I just think it's it, it it's an impulse, isn't it? You know, you, you get if you get a great bit of news, you know, you you little and before the pandemic, how many times do you have to mention that? Your little and comes home and he's passed his exams, you know, you don't stand back and clap him, do you or her? You you cuddle them and you kiss them and you say, Well done, you know, it's a it's an impulse. Um now if you score a goal in the last minute that wins the game, that impulse is to go over and, you know, be a group and you've worked hard and you've got a result and your impulse is to cuddle if you want, but certainly go and congratulate together, uh, or to celebrate together and congratulate the, um, the goal scorer. And that's quite a powerful thing that is when you've just scored a goal and you've got every, you haven't got three over the other corner, you know, not getting involved. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Now, of course, with Billy, you know, he scored his goal against Wildstone in the 91st minute um, to level the game. Now, everybody wanted us to win that game. So, of course, that's not going to be as big a it. They're, they're going to be happy for Bill, they're, you know, but they, it's not one of them that you can all dive on top of each other and be, be happy. Um, so it, it really is, depending on the state of the game, um, but VAR has changed a little bit of that, hasn't it, for the top yeah. boys at the, at the top club, at the Premier League, because they score a goal and you see them, everyone has to look round to see what the linesman's doing or, you know, what, what's happening because they can't celebrate that goal until they know for sure that he's not, you know, fingernail offside sort of thing, you know. So that sort of curtailed that a little bit. But when you see footballers that are passionate, that there isn't any, and I don't mean passionate as in cuddling and kissing and all that sort of thing, um, but just to celebrate together because often they've worked all week very, very hard and they've been working on something and something comes off, somebody scores a, uh, an unbelievable free kick or a goal or something, then I'm pleased when they all celebrate together. Now, of course, we, you know, at, at these times we've got to be careful on social distancing and all that sort of thing. So, um, it's probably been curtailed a little bit, but it's that impulse that is very difficult when um, you know your kid comes home, it's passed all his exams. It's a very passionate game. After like, thinking back to some of the last minute winners we've already had this season, I've been quite tempted to run yeah. down to the corner flag on occasions, just about to help myself yeah. back. But um, you got that in you. Yeah. <laughs> the knee slide now, my knees wouldn't be up for that. Uh, exactly. I wouldn't if I if I went on the knee slide, I wouldn't be getting back up again. 
Right. And actually, that moves us on very nicely to the last three questions, which are all about injuries. <laughs> uh, well Graham May is the first one. And he says, what's the score with Ben Winter, Liam Davis regarding return? And what's happened with Andrew Nelson? Because, of course, we haven't seen him since joining. Yeah, well, Andrew Nelson got um, an injury in pre-season. Um, in, the, I think, the set, first game I took him off because he was going to get sent off. And the second game, he hyperextended his knee. And what that did, we learned later, after trying to rehabilitate him for like uh, overextension of the, of the knee joint, um, they found a very small piece of bone that was creating... Um, so it was chipped off, off the knee where he hyperextended it. And this small bone was causing fluid to come into his knee every time he trained. And it took a few investigations, et cetera, et cetera, before they found out what it was. When they found out what it was, this is like the top consultants. And, you know, he saw a few before he had it operated on. They found that the bone had come out, <clears throat> come away and left a little hole. Um, in his knee. So they had to refill the hole with whatever it is that they refill it with, you know, and, and then wait for that to gel with the other parts of the bone. So it's a, it was so unlucky for him because it was a, an unbelievable injury and a very unusual. Um, so, you know, at the moment, funny you should say that, but um, he's back now training because he's had to self-isolate because he, he's been at home up north um but he, he he won't be ready for i don't know maybe maybe he'll make before the end of the season maybe not we'll have to you know wait wait and see but uh it was a horrendous injury so it was unlucky liam davis is the same his injury was um a reconstruction of his ankle um and He's working very hard to try and you know get the full mo mobility back. His is another long-term one. Um, ben went uh, had a hamstring injury, and I was hoping to bring him back for this game, uh, the Wilstone game, which is gone. But unfortunately, uh, we had to wait uh, just a few more days until you know we we, we could absolutely be sure that it wasn't going to go again. You know, obviously people are assessing him every day. Um, but he won't be, he's not far away now. So he'll, he'll probably be back within the next uh, week or so. Ben Winter is uh, clearly the one that's uh, nearest to uh, returning to first team action then. Um, yeah. Then we've got Alan Merson uh, with the penultimate question. Now he works in the youth section of an Isthmian League club, uh, has also some contacts at other clubs. Hi, Alan. I know uh, you've got a long association with the club. Now he says the general consensus is that injuries such as hamstrings, are on the increase because of the Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday nature of games at the moment. Uh, therefore, little opportunity other than to play, recover and play again. Um, adding in travel requirements, there's little time to either put in the required strength and conditioning work or the work on pattern of play and tactics. He also says that there is an over-reliance but very necessary dependence on using artificial surfaces. And would this exasperate the situation? Does this explain the terrible run of injuries that Torgi have had at the moment, or is there something more to it than that? So quite a lot in there, Gary. But again, talk about the injuries, and certainly this Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday thing it isn't going to help, is it? And you've mentioned that yourself. No, it's not. Um, and did you say Alan? Alan, Alan yeah. explains it very well. Exactly what he's put in there is exactly what it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the top athletes, uh, the players, um, and anyway, because you're playing a contact sport, many of the, many of the injuries are contacts because there's more percentage chance of, of getting injuries if you're playing more games in a month, for instance. Um, there's more chance of getting fatigue injuries, i.e. Um, strains, hamstrings, strains, calf strains, um, and if players have got anything that has been weak over their career, um, that then raises its ugly head sometimes as well. Um, so a lot of clubs are going through this. It's not, it's not only us. And, you know, a lot of Premier League clubs are moaning about it. And yet, you know, they've had a, a sort of a, uh, they have the sim a similar sort of programme to us at the moment. And everybody's moaning about it. 
but the football authorities are desperate to to try and finish the season and get the you know get the season going, get the entertainment for the public at home, um, and keep football going because they know how how important it is. So at the moment, um, if you're a Premier League club, you've probably got you know, 40 professionals you can choose from, but at our levels then you, you, you know, you, you're down to a much, much smaller squad. And sometimes you have to play somebody that you're crossing your fingers, that you hope that he's going to be OK. Obviously, with the, uh, with the doctor's blessing, with the physio's blessing and with the player himself's blessing. Um, but on other occasions, if we had 40 and we had two that were very similar, you, you don't mind leaving somebody out and bringing that somebody else in. So... Um, no, it's a, it's a, it's a tough time at the minute, and um, which is why you're never going to be playing. Nobody, not any team, is going to play 100% their best game every single game they play. But you've got to fight through it. You've got to get through it. Um, the players have got to understand that they're not the only ones. And uh, when we're in a game, you've got to do your best to to win it. But it does even it up a little bit when like for instance the three or four teams that are part-time like for instance Altrincham um uh they and Woking you know the ones that are part-time they sometimes have had a rest because Dover they've only played 15 games um so that they'd all obviously like to play more games but they've had that little bit of a rest and the last it's not an excuse but the last couple of games we've had have been teams like the next game we play against Woking. Their game was postponed uh, yesterday, uh, Tuesday. So they'd have had a little bit more of a break than us. And we, we seem to be playing these teams that uh, have, had, have had a little break. Um, but again, I'm not making that as an excuse. I'm just saying, because it might suit us a bit later on. But at the moment, it's uh, you, you, you're, doing, you're going each day as it comes and then trying to, pick a team come Friday to, um, um, you know, play the game. I mean, that I was just thinking about that man's question earlier about the set plays and that. And yeah. I think he said right at the end, didn't he, how often do you practice your set plays? Yeah. Well, obviously you can't have the same set plays every week because people are watching them. So you work on the set plays on the Friday when you know the team. Because yeah. the point is working them on the Wednesday before you know who, whether the injured ones, who's playing, you know, yeah. which ones have recovered from injury, which ones are ready, so on and so forth. So it's generally a Friday for a couple of hours. Um, but we've got two sets of set plays. And I promise him um, that 50% uh, of our goals would have been scored by set plays coming in this season. Sorry to go back to that, but it was, it, it was um, just in the edge. So it was a chance to bring that up. No, excellent. That's uh, another insight. So thanks for that, Gaffer. Now, the final question goes to uh, Chris Pascoe. Uh, similarly, talk about injuries again. Uh, slightly different question. He says, unfortunately, we seem to have suffered an awful lot of injuries this season, so much so that there were as many as nearly a dozen players seemingly unavailable through injury suspension or being rested for the Wheelstone game. Uh, can you give us an update on some of these players, many of whom are amongst the fans' favourites and likely to return? And why do you think so many players seem to have suffered? Uh, so many injuries during this season. Uh, now, obviously, that bit I think we've probably already covered, but are you able to yeah. give us an, an update as much as you can on any of the other players that were unavailable uh, last night? It's difficult to give a real proper up update sometimes because you want to tell people and be honest with what their injuries are, but the ones that are not going to be long-term, um, I think it's important to keep their injuries out of the public domain. Mm. Because all clubs that you're playing will be quite interested to know that one or two of your best players has got a particular problem mm. and might you know, use that as a as a tactic, for instance. Um, so, um, but what we can say is that we have a, a very, very good medical team. We have. Um, the club supports that medical team with the finances of sending these players out for MRI scans that are not cheap. I think we've got the world record at the moment of MRI scans. Um, because we, because of the small squad, we need to find out quickly um, what the diagnosis is. 
And, you know, obviously when a physio can look at it and go, yeah, I think that might be a grade one or grade two hamstring, for instance. But the MRI scan allows you to know exactly where the injury is, what it is, um, how, um, how much of a problem it will be and how long it will take. And then that dictates the, uh, what the physio does. You know, it, it, it dictates what he does with that, with that player, the treatment, as it were. So, uh, and then we get an idea of the, the length of time that that player might become available. And that's why we pretty much know with all of them what the time scales are with their, with their particular injuries. Um, I think we spoke about uh, Andrew Nelson and we spoke about Dizzy, uh, Liam Davis um, and Ben. But I think everybody else is not uh, necessarily other than righty, of course, and we know what that was. Mm. Um, but, you know, we've just got to say they're, they're being treated well. Um, the club looks after them and when they're ready, we'll, 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 let, we'll let people know. But uh, if they're not playing, it's because they can't for one reason or another. Yeah. I mean, this week we had um, against Wildstone, and again, I'm not using it as an excuse, it's just fact, that that was uh, the, the only 15 players because we actually had one short on the bench. Um, and on the bench were three young boys, Olaf. Price and Slap, um, but uh, that was the the only fifteen that were available to us, including uh, Hammy, the goalkeeper, of course, that, that we've got on loan from Turo, the second keeper, who's doing great by the way, and he's a great lad, and I want to say well done to him because his personality and his drive is is unbelievable, and he's like, you know, he's such a supporter of all the lads, and also Sean and the goalkeepers and that, you know, he's been brilliant. Um, so James Hammy. And uh, he's been a good signing, even though he hasn't he hasn't played. But uh, so enthusiastic. But anyway, so does that answer the? Yeah, question? I think it's. I, I certainly think it does, and it's 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 just great to hear that. Unfortunately, we can't legislate so much for injuries, but you have got a you know a great medical team in, in place for that. Um, so that brings all the questions to to a close, Gaff. Although I think you've also you've had some uh, messages, goodwill and birthday messages. I think you've sent across that you wanted to give a quick mention to. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you sent me those, didn't you? Um, yeah, there was a few uh, messages we've had from supporters, some that are uh, celebrating birthdays, some that are going through a bit of a rocky period at the moment. And uh, yeah, uh, I know that they, they've uh, appreciated uh, some words from yourself. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. I mean, I don't know whether they want, I won't read out the ailments as such. We'll just say <clears throat> the first one is uh, uh, Paula. Doolan has sent in about uh, her father, 81, who's poorly at the moment. Um, she says he's a massive Torquay fan and he's proud of how the team have played this season. So um, we appreciate that. Uh, he hasn't got his, his name down here, but, um, you know, for all our supporters that have had a, a bit of a rough time, you know, we, we want to wish you well and hope you stay safe and, and uh, you know, good luck with whatever your ailment is um, and hopefully it's something where you can recover well from. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, we had Tina Adams right in regarding uh, her father, Roy. Would that be a dad or could that be a, a vicar? Father Roy? No. Anyway, um, so to Roy, who, who's 91, who's a long standing season ticket old, mate. And, you know, it's always sad to hear these um, problems that people have, but uh, hang on in there, mate, and um, hopefully we'll see you soon. So we've got another one here, Matty, who's undergoing some treatment and hoping uh, to continue with his GCSE exams. So, you know, all the best with your exams, Matt. They're, they're always going to be important to you for the future. And, um, you know, uh, hang on in there and, and you know, be have that belief in uh, your treatment and that sort of stuff. But um, as I say, good luck with, you, with your exams and hope to see you soon. Rob Howes, 25 years old. Um, he's undergoing some pretty heavy treatment as well. On, and he's got, a, uh, on February the 18th, he, he has his surgery. So, you know, trust the powers that be, mate. Um, you know, I've had uh, similar sort of quite big operations and come out of it 
uh, quite well, I think. <laughs> um, and, you know, we have to trust in our NHS because um, they're doing a great job. So you know, hopefully you'll be out soon and um, our, our thoughts are with you, mate. Good luck. Um, and then one happy ninth birthday to Leighton, who's a former Torquay United mascot. So happy birthday, Leighton. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Um, and then finally, oh, you is that for me? That's not for me, sure. Oh, you better say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gaffer, I know that there has been uh, quite a bit of a campaign on social media saying that if you are... Uh, are the man, man to take us back into the football league after our seven-year exile in non-league football? That people be campaigning for a, a statue of you to be around playing more, or in, maybe in, in the town centre. I'm it'd not sure. Cheap, that... mate, it'd be cheap. It's only five foot six worth of metal. <laughs> well, I'm not sure there's been so much of a campaign uh, for Alfie's contribution, uh, oh. but he, he wanted to let us know, Gaffer, if you win us the uh, league or the trophy this year, then I'll get your initials tattooed on my bum. So thank you very much for that, Alfie. Um, we'll probably hold you to it, but probably won't ask for any proof. We'll probably just take your word for that one. Uh, but nice to know you've got Alfie's support as well there, Gaffer. <laughs> All I hope is that Alfie's got a girlfriend or a wife with the same initials as me, otherwise he's in trouble. <laughs> Well, thanks for um, reading all those messages out, Gaffer. I know it means a lot to the people involved and I can only echo everybody at the club's best wishes to all those that are uh, not having a great time at the moment and also to uh, uh, to birthday boy Leighton. Happy birthday to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that brings yeah. our uh, session to a close. Thank you so much, Gaffer, for answering all of those. And thank you, of course, to the Yellow Army for taking the time to get in touch with us. And it, it's great to have you on board, even if you can't be at the stadium at the moment. And uh, I know there's a lot more excitement to come from this season so on behalf of myself and the gaffer we wish you well take care keep safe and we'll speak to you all again very very soon all the best everybody <laughs>